Now, Cyclone Bipar Joy has already started disrupting life in Gujarat and Maharashtra as it intensified into an extremely severe cyclonic storm. Massive waves seen lashing coasts in Saurashtra and Mumbai as strong winds swept across the regions. At least five deaths have been reported from the two states as they prepare to brace for the wrath of Cyclone Bipar Joy, which is likely to make landfall, as I mentioned, between Kutch and Pakistan's Karachi in a few hours. What can we expect as the cyclone nears? What areas will be impacted the most? We take a look here. Now, Bipar Joy, it is expected to be devastating. The cyclone is expected to cross Saurashtra, as I mentioned. Kutch and between Mandvi, you can see it on the maps here. Near Gujarat's Jakao port, that you can see here, near Gujarat's Jakao port and amid sometime during the evening today. As per the IMD forecast, the extremely severe cyclonic storm, it will sustain wind speed of 120 to 130 kilometers per hour and it will reach up to 150 kilometers after landfall. However, the wind is likely to reduce by 10 p.m. Now, India is, as well as Pakistan, authorities suspended fishing activities here until the 16th of June. Mandvi in Gujarat will witness high to very high sea levels while the Jakao port, that will witness very high seas. Because of the high wind speeds and landfall of the cyclone, the state of Gujarat today will witness very heavy rainfall. While on the 16th, this rainfall will begin spreading towards some other regions of the Indian state of Rajasthan. You can see it on the maps here, Gujarat and then Rajasthan. And on the 17th, the rain will completely take over all of Rajasthan. That will be on the 17th of June. Further, the Indian Weather Department had also informed that the cyclone is now completely detached from the monsoonal flow and it will not adversely impact the rain bearing system or its performance here. In consonance with its firm resolve to mitigate the hardships felt by the population during times of natural disasters, all armed forces that are the Army, Navy, Air Force and Indian Coast Guard have prepared themselves to provide assistance to the locals in view of Cyclone Biparjoy in Gujarat. Indian Army has deployed more than 27 relief columns across Gujarat as well as at the forward locations of Mandvi and Dwarka. Army authorities have also jointly started relief operations along with civil administration as well as with the NDRF teams. Nearly 75,000 residents living within the coast in Gujarat have been evacuated. Fishing activities have been suspended in India and neighboring Pakistan until the 16th of June, as I mentioned earlier. As per authorities, residents living within 5 kilometers of the coast were evacuated and those living within 10 kilometers may also have to move out. It is going to be very difficult if we lose our homes. We are poor people. We have to do daily wage labor. We are also dependent on our animals. I don't know what will happen next. In neighboring Pakistan, auditorium halls and schools, other government buildings were converted into relief camps to provide shelter to displaced people. In the southern districts that only last summer was affected by the devastating floods that displaced thousands, ships and boats have been moved from some areas of Pakistan's coast while hospitals, coast, while hospitals in the region were put on high alert as well as part of preparations for the cyclone. As of now, over 60,000 residents have been evacuated and another 40,000 residents, will total to about 100,000, will be evacuated by Thursday morning as per Pakistan's National Disaster Management Authority. Our concern is, when the cyclone is over, how will we feed our children? If our boats are gone, if our huts are also gone, we will be languishing with no resources. Now, as Cyclone Bipar Joy approaches the coastal region of Gujarat, four ships with humanitarian assistance and disaster relief are on standby. Indian Navy has confirmed this in a statement. The Western Railways also cancelled around 95 trains running through, originating or terminating in Bipar Joy affected areas of Gujarat. Now, experts say climate change that's leading to an increase in cyclones in the Arabian Sea region, making preparations for natural disasters all the more urgent here. Experts further found that the frequency, duration and intensity of cyclones in the Arabian Sea had increased significantly between 1982 and 2019.
Now for more on this, our correspondent Disha Shah from Mumbai and our Pakistan Bureau Chief Anas Malik from Islamabad are joining us live. Thank you both for joining us. Disha, my first question to you. The cyclone, as I mentioned, is expected to make landfall in a few hours. It's likely to uh, strike catch in India and move towards Pakistan. What can you tell us about its progression so far and the preparations in place? Well, certainly as per the latest IMD's uh, prediction and forecast, the landfall uh, is likely to hit the state of Gujarat uh, anytime between 4 to 6 p.m. today. It is very close uh, to the uh, Gujarat coastal areas and especially as per the IMD's prediction, uh, Saurashtra and Kutch are the districts that are likely going to be impacted massively. Uh, in fact, there is also a possibility of extensive damage as per the IMD's warnings. The warnings also suggest that how there could be flooding especially in the low-lying areas. The kacha houses uh, could be damaged uh, extensively because the wind speed could be anywhere between 125 to 130 kilometers per hour. So that is something which the IMD is predicting. And along with these two districts, there are six other districts in the state of Gujarat which all where uh, Cyclone Biparjoy is likely to pass. So, uh, of course, the damage could be there on the ground level is what the officials are also expecting. But Keeping that alert in mind, keeping the red alert in mind, the preparations have already been done on the ground level. So as we speak, there are about 18 NDRF teams that have been deployed each in all of these eight uh, districts that are likely going to be affected with Cyclone Viparjoy. Apart from that, there are going to be 12 SDRF teams as well that are being deployed. There are uh, 115 state uh, road uh, department officials, uh, the rescue teams are there. There are more than 397 electricity department mm. uh, you know, teams as well because there is also a possibility of power uh, failures as well in the affected district. So all of the rescue and relief teams are already uh, on standby. In certain locations we are already witnessing due to heavy high tide and wind speed. Uh, you know, there is some sort of property damages as well, which the relief operations is currently taking care of. So at this point in time, this is the current update that we are receiving from IMD. Uh, more than 67 right. uh, to 70 trains have been cancelled as we speak. Right. Uh, thank you for that, Disha. Going to Anas. Now, Anas, evacuations have been carried out. What can you tell us of the measures again taken to ensure safety of the residents here? Well, over 100,000 people have been relocated to safety or evacuated from these possibly uh, cyclone hit areas uh, or in that uh, sphere of the cyclone uh, uh, effect, uh, they have been relocated. We're looking at another 50,000 to 60,000 evacuations as well in the next hour or so. Uh, we're look, uh, the Pakistani military has been deployed. Uh, they're taking actively, they're actively taking part in the uh, uh, evacuation operations along with the ND. DMA, the National Disaster Management Authority. There are about 20 teams of the NDMA that have been deployed. Then you have the Sindh government and their local teams headed by the, uh, the deputy commissioners and uh, assistant commissioners. They are all also actively involved. Uh, so la largely speaking, we're expecting the cyclone's impact or the cyclone's landfall on the Pakistani side in the next two, two hours or three hours at tops. That's what uh, the Pakistani Med Department, the PMD, has said mm -hmm. and has predicted. Uh, rains are already ongoing. Heavy showers in Tatta, Badin, Sajawal, Gidani, Pasni. Uh, these five areas, they are currently ongoing. Uh, we're expecting some impact of the cyclone on the coastal city of Karachi as well. But fortunately enough, because of the trajectory being changed, uh, Karachi is not likely to be affected largely. Uh, right. With that being said, uh, precautionary measures are being taken. The Ministry of uh, uh, Energy and Power, they've, got, they've deployed their teams as well in order to ensure and prevent any untoward situation that can arise due to the electricity lines uh, that pass through the area. So. Pakistan is prepared uh, at their at their part, and they say uh, that they're also prepared on to the other bit, uh, bit that is the rehabilitation bit, as in when the the landfall of the cyclone is expected, then they move towards the rehabilitation bit onto the disaster hit areas. Right. Him? 
Right, Anas, well, do stay on with us. Disha, coming back to you now, massive waves, as I mentioned earlier, it's already started disrupting life in Gujarat and Maharashtra. Massive waves seen lashing coasts in Saurashtra and Mumbai. Strong winds have swept across the region. At least five deaths have been reported. What can you tell us? Well, uh, certainly as far as the official numbers are concerned, uh, in the state of Gujarat, uh, the official figure stands at about four, uh, you know, because of the heavy, uh, you know, wind speed and uh, high tide, four people have lost their lives. And as far as Mumbai is concerned, we have seen uh, five young boys uh, getting drowned at Juhu Beach earlier this week because of the, uh, you know, high uh, wave. Uh, so. Overall, if you talk about the official numbers, it goes to uh, nine in terms of all totality, if you talk about. Uh, but definitely, the rescue and relief operations, if you talk about in the state of Gujarat, is going on as we speak. Because Mumbai, we have not seen uh, any sort of impact or effect uh, apart from the heavy high tide that we are looking, uh, that we saw even today. But in terms of uh, Gujarat as well, over 75,000 uh, people have been evacuated within the 10 kilometers of the coastal district which are likely going to be impacted with Cyclone Bipajoy. So there is minimum, uh, I mean, there is no loss of uh, life at all and there is minimum destruction to the properties is what the Gujarat government officials are really estimating. But so far, four are the official figures that we are learning uh, that have, uh, uh, you know, reported loss as far as in the state of Gujarat is concerned. All right. Well, Disha, thank you so much for clarifying that. Anna, same question to you. What is the situation on ground currently? What's the latest advisory? Well, as, as we speak, uh, we've seen high tides across the coastal belt of Karachi, the Hawks Bay beach. Uh, we've, got, we've heard that uh, the water is being splashing and being spilled over to the roads. Uh, fortunately enough, the authorities acted in time and they had put a ban on the public going towards or nearer to these beaches. Uh, Section 144 had also been imposed in the particular area. Uh, so for now, uh, what we're looking at is the impact uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the spell the water spell but uh, fortunately enough no loss of life uh, though there is a possible hint or a possible fear of loss of property as a, as a result of the ongoing uh, uh, situation that is developing but with that it is currently being very closely being monitored uh, 17 different uh, uh, structures and models are being used to monitor this alongside the Soparco, the Pakistani authority that looks after uh, such uh, or does such predictions. Uh, the PMD, the Pakistani Met Department is also monitoring and we've got teams on the ground. So largely speaking, there are preventive measures that, that are already in place that are put way uh, 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 in time in place in order to ensure that there is no loss of life uh, that can possibly arise due to this cyclone. Right. Him. Well, Disha and Anas, thank you so much for getting us up to speed with the situation on ground. We will, of course, continue to track the developments closely with you too. Now, moving on now, for more on this, we also have with us Mahesh Palavat, Vice President of SkyMet Weather, joining us live from New Delhi. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Uh, thank you. Welcome, Hal. Now, sir, to understand this better, could you please take us through the trajectory of Bipar Joy, which is likely to make landfall between Kutch and uh, Pakistan's Karachi today? Uh, see, him uh, until tomorrow morning, the cyclone was uh, moving in a northwesterly direction, but now it has uh, changed its track and it is moving in a northeasterly direction towards uh, northwest parts of Kutch region. And landfall will be anytime soon uh, by 4 p.m. The landfall process will start or you can say commence by 4 p.m. and it will take another two to three hours to for the eye of cyclone to uh, move over the land. So all, all the process will take around two, two and a half hours and uh, it is very near to coast and landfall point uh, is seen to be uh, Nalia or uh, you can say bordering the uh, Kutch and Pakistan with a wind speed of 120 to 130 kilometer. And after making landfall, it will move over South Sindh and thereafter towards uh, Southwest Rajasthan as a depression. So the next uh, eight to 10 hours are very crucial because uh, wind speed have already increased and uh, torrential rains are on. And after the landfall, wind speed will die down gradually in next two to three hours and they will be less than 100 kilometer per hour. 
but rain activities because outer wind or your southern wind uh, peripheral wind of clouds uh, will continue to move in giving heavy to very heavy downpour for at least next 3 to 4 hours so right. oh, after say uh, midnight uh, the rain activities will intensify over uh, badin and uh, adjoining parts of uh, southeast pakistan as well as southwest rajasthan like uh, sirohi pali nagor uh, and uh, barmer jodhpur jaisalmer yeah uh, right sir that being said and just for more clarity here because it is expected to be devastating how would you predict the impact of this also how do you assess the measures that are in place like the evacuations and for the safety of the people in these regions i see him all already uh, the authorities are alert because uh, trajectory was predicted well in advance and now more than 74000 people have been evacuated and the low lying areas is cleared and storm surge is expected to inundate the low lying areas and uh, uh, the authorities are on alert and there are relief camps and people are also very much aware of the threat of this cyclone uh, that's why we do not expect any casualty in terms of uh, 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 human uh, or uh, the cattle uh, but yes uh, property damage cannot be ruled out the uprooting of trees kacha houses uh, uh, asbestos sheet tin shed and uh, the uh, uh, damage to communication and uh, electric line uh, power uh, power failure uh, this uh, will be there but after the landfall as the uh, intensity of this particular cyclone will reduce rapidly due to cut off of moisture and it will be over land so uh, uh, after say at 10 or 11 pm the things will start improving but as the cyclone will continue to make landfall until uh, 8 pm Uh, therefore the relief and uh, rescue operation uh, will take some more time uh, by morning tomorrow the relief and rescue operation uh, will be carried uh, but we do not expect any major casualty due to this cyclone all right so yeah. also just to uh, bring this in how would you assess the impact of climate change do you think it's played a role with regards to the intensity and the severity of such weather events yes uh, we have seen that uh, earlier the bay bay of bengal was more active uh, in terms of uh, cyclogenesis but now since last 4 to 5 years we have seen the uh, sea surface temperature of arabian sea is also rising and there are more intense and frequent uh, cyclone formation over uh, arabian sea as well most of the cyclone usually travel in northwesterly direction away from indian coast towards sometimes over oman uh, yaman and sometimes uh, they recur Uh, to pakistan but uh, since last 2 uh, to 3 years we have seen a uh, outed uh, uh, cyclone which uh, traveled up to gujarat and up uh, as a low pressure area it traveled up to delhi and ncr and now the intensity and frequency is increasing over arabian sea as well and uh, we can say that now recurvature is also more frequent so in coming years uh, we can say the impact will be more over uh, western coast of the country as we have seen uh, uh, historically the east coast of the country was more vulnerable but now uh, the uh, gujarat coast and maharashtra coast as well as south sin uh, will also be impacted by these frequent cyclones all yeah. right uh, mr mahesh palava thank you so much for joining us on this podcast with your inputs and insights on this thank you beyond is now available in your country download the app now get all the news on the move